Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Shabtur Shibanerjee. I am the fifth generation homeopath of a distinguished family of homeopathy. I'd like to share with you today the different varieties of cough sounds. Now, my granddad used to say that you don't have to ask the patient when you get a cough. You have to hear him and prescribe. And that's why what I want to share with you. That hear the patient, what he is coughing and prescribe on the basis of that. I've inherited this treasure from my ancestors and today I'd like to present to you the different varieties of cough sounds which patients present to us. This, my friends, is a very interesting Indian drug which I'd like to share with you. That is Cassia sophera. Cassia sophera is an Indian drug which has been used in Ayurvedic literature for a very long time. C-A-S-S-I-A -S -S is Cassia. And in Cassia, one of the very interesting thing is, is the cough always precedes the asthma. So how will you get that? <laughs> so the cough that is preceding the asthma in case of Cassia sophera. So that's also very interesting. Next one is the hawking cough of Sticta. And how will you get a hawking cough? In Sticta, what happens? There's a lot of mucus in the nose. And the nose there is from the nose there is a post-nasal dripping. So whenever the mucus reaches the throat, he hawks it out. <coughs> and they hawk it out. So the hawking is accompanied with the cough. <coughs> and they hawk it out. And whenever they hawk it out, they get the cough with that. That is a typical cough of sticta. The cough quantity or the cough proportion is not so much. The hawking is more important. <coughs> ah! And they hawk it out. That's typical of sticta. Next, my friends, we have two very interesting medicines. Is medicines which have cough which ends in vomiting. Cough which ends in vomiting has got two interesting medicines, but they are in two different age groups. Group one is for children. And that wonderful medicine is mephitis. In mephitis, you have <coughs> and they vomit it out. That's the typical cough of mephitis. But especially for children, remember. And whenever they cough, the face becomes all blue in case of mephitis. It's all blue for mephitis. And they're better by cold water. They're better by bathing in cold water. So the cough ends in vomiting in mephitis. Another interesting medicine which has got that, but it's more for the elder age group or more for adults, is coccus cacti. Coccus cacti also has got that cough, ends in vomiting. And coccus cacti, it's the thick mucus which is collected in the throat. So, <coughs> and they vomit it out. So the mucus is in the throat. <coughs> and they vomit it out. Again, you see the difference between rheumax and coccus. Rheumax is... <coughs> <coughs> there's a tickling in the larynx, but there is no mucus. In coccus, there is also tickling, but there's a lot of mucus in the throat. <coughs> and they vomit the mucus out. That's typical of coccus cacti. So you see, just hearing these cuffs, and you can come up with a medicine. Next one I'd like to share with you are a few very interesting medicines. Many times patients will tell you that whenever they cough, it's just... <coughs> So cough in one paroxysm, <coughs> gap, <coughs> gap, <coughs> gap. So cough in one paroxysm. And we have that in calcadia cup, where you have cough in one paroxysm. Next, we have cough in two paroxysms. <coughs> <coughs> so cough in two paroxysms. And that we have in pulsatilla and Merxol. Cough in two paroxysms, Pulsatilla and Merxol. Next, my friends, we have cough in three paroxysms, and that's also quite interesting. <coughs> so cough in three paroxysms, and that's the cough of cuprum metallicum, where you have cough in three paroxysms. And very interestingly for cuprum met, do remember, the cough is always better from cold rings. So cold rings makes the cough better. That's a very important for your cuprum metallicum. The next, my friends, is also a very important, the loudest cough of the Metromedica. And the loudest cough, you have that in hyoscyamus. <coughs> and you can hear it almost from outside the room. You can hear it from outside the consultation room. <coughs> it's the loudest cough of the Metromedica, is hyoscyamus. 
and the cough is generally worse on lying down. You can prescribe that in acutes as well, worse from lying down. And last, my friends, is the cough of capsicum, where whenever they cough, <coughs> and they will touch the knee there. Whenever they cough, <coughs> there's pain here. Whenever they cough, <coughs> there's pain here. So interestingly for capsicum, is cough with pain in the distant parts. And that's very interesting for your capsicum. Cough with pain in the distant parts. So that almost sums up the, the cuffs we have learned. And I'll just do a quick recap so that you can be absolutely clear. I shared with you the cuff of anti-Mars and Iriodiction. <laughs> well, it's the wheeze. I shared with you the barking cuff of Heeper and Sambucus. <laughs> and that's the barking of Heeper and Sambucus. I shared with you the dry cough of spongia, where it's like a saw being driven through a pine board. <laughs> That's the typical of spongia. I shared with you the tickling cough of rheumex. <laughs> That's rheumex. I shared with you the paroxysmal cough of corallium rubrum. <laughs> That's typical of Corallium and Drosera as well. I shared with you the cough precedes the asthma of Cassia. <laughs> the cough preceding the asthma. I shared with you the paroxysmal cough within one paroxysms of Calc. <coughs> the two paroxysms of Pulsatilla and Merck. <coughs> I shared with you the three paroxysms of Cupra. <coughs> And the last one was the loudest cuff of Hyosimus, whereas <coughs> that's the loudest cuff. And my friends, do remember from now on, always hear the cuff, not ask the patient much questions. Thank you.